Thanks. Uh, so uh, as mentioned, I'm Ralph from our loop. Uh, as Tom mentioned, we're a bunch of uh, engineers from around the world. Uh, and in, in this talk, I'm going to talk about our passive magnets. So uh, before I get started, I guess I want to talk about the R pod, right? So uh, the R pod is a prototype scale uh, of the Hyperloop, right? We are competing in SpaceX competition. I think one of the cool things about our product is uh, our, our pod is something that you can run into. You know, you're not going to hit your shins on it because it's a, a little, you know, prototype that's this tall. Our prototype is massive uh, and is part of the reason of why we added the passive magnets uh, to our second design. Uh, I also want to say thanks to everyone. I know Brent and Tom really set this up for us. Uh, I'm, I'm just an engineer on the East Coast. Second time out to California. Both times are for the R loop, so it's, it's been a blast. Uh, so this is me. Graduate 2013, uh, thing I want to talk about is I started out as what Tom, what Tom had mentioned, just an engineer on the team. I worked in the mechanical and aerospace, or aero side, and then slowly turned into the mechanical lead. Uh, I worked in the Department of Defense, so I got to actually work with EMOL, so the maglev stuff is really cool. Uh, chemical, air and gas, consumer electronics, and I'll put uh, high speed transportation on there. Uh, and my favorite thing is I still play the circle game. Uh, for those who don't know what that is, uh, I just made you look, so. Uh, so our loop. So I won't go too, into too much details because Tom mentioned a lot about it. Uh, but the key things I want to talk about is we were all online. So Slack was a huge thing for us. And all the designs we made were all in Fusion 360, which has its own faults. But the great thing is we could be working on the same model at the same time and still iterate together while we're in Google Hangouts talking. And someone's in India, one person's in Australia, and I'm on the East Coast. Uh, so it's really just resolving time conflicts. But we didn't have a product issue. Uh, and we also were the first ones of the Innovation Award for Competition 1, uh, which wasn't what we wanted to get. We wanted to be the fastest down the track. Uh, but we did still get something out of it. Uh, and I think it's something to be proud of. So back to why we're here. So we added passive uh, levitation skis to our design pod after the first competition. Uh, and so in order to tell you why we added them, I have to explain how we got there. So uh, design weekend went by. We had a design for our pod. Uh, it had the Arxpax hover engines as its main levitation purpose. Uh, but we realized soon into the competition that we needed to make some changes in order for this to be a successful pod. Uh, so we came up with a, an idea to add some passive levitation. So in order to get there, uh, I think it's key to uh, understand some of our substructure and uh, why our, where our weight comes from. So we have our brakes. And I highly recommend come check out our poster to how we got there. But we decided to use non-contact. More magic with the magnets. Uh, we have eight Arxpax hover engines, uh, auxiliary propulsion for a low speeds in order to move fast. Uh, as we, as Tom mentioned, we relied on the, the pusher from from SpaceX. Uh, but the key, cool thing about the Arxpax hover engines is that when you're standing still, you have passive levitation, right? So as uh, there are two teams that competed this year on just levitating their pod. You know, we were one of those guys that, you know, we didn't have to be moving at any speed to get off the ground. We just sat there. Uh, but the major catch is that the Arxpax hover engines are very heavy. You know, we have eight of them. Uh, and in order to power the Arxpax hover engines, you also need to add batteries. So the majority of our weight went to two things that really just let us hover at low heights or low speeds. Uh, so when we built our first pod, which uh, looks better than the rendering, um, it, we came to a conclusion that we actually made some terrible assumptions and we were underweight due to some design flaws. Uh, and so our, we reduced our hover rate to 8 to 9 millimeters, which is way too low. And by reducing the hover height because we had higher weight, which means we needed more power and more torque at our motors. And therefore, the, the other side effect is the higher drag at higher speeds. Right? We're lower to the ground. Uh, it's a haulback array. There's no way to cancel out the drag. So what we decided was, as Sam had mentioned earlier, to do a double haulback. So a double haulback, the good, great thing about it is the uh, opposing magnets will actually counteract some of the drag force. So you get some good increase without too much changes to the actual, uh, I guess, uh, levitation properties we're looking for. So the design we ended up going with was uh, using a double haulback where we had a single one up top and two on each side of the I-beam. Uh, just for, for clarity, the I-beam is a spec from SpaceX. So this design here gives us the ability to reduce the air gap up top if we need to in order to generate more lift or increase it in order to, uh, uh, sorry, uh, to reduce the, 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 the overall drag of our product. 
So this design here is nice for us because we actually were able to incorporate it into our pod. But the key thing I want to stress here is that this is all simulated data. We don't have any real um, uh, hallback array data on our, our, uh, our passive skis here, but we do have data to say that we know uh, our FEA is, is relatively accurate because we were able to test this on the brakes. So once again, I'll put another ping for my uh, brake presentation, our poster. So this is what we actually incorporated into the pod, right? So here you'll see the bottom, the two here, and you can kind of pretend that there's an, an I-beam here that gives us our lift. So we have the, the two on the bottom here, and you can't really see in this picture, but the top uh, set of magnets right here. And so, as I mentioned, this is, it, it, it was part of a design, or, sorry, uh, the main reason we went with this is we didn't have to make any changes to our pod. So it was easy to plug and chug, just move it in for, no, for the next competition. So here's, here are the, the numbers of why this passive skis are very important to our pod. So uh, at low speeds, we don't really gain any, positive, uh, any net benefit because you know, the, the double limb is requiring the speeds in order to get the current up. But as you can see, uh, the, as you increase our, our speed in meters per second, uh, we start to see gains and we actually get a really good one around 50 meters per second. Uh, and then the reason why a single versus a double is, as we mentioned in Sam's presentation, that um, the double, it actually cancels out some of the drag, uh, drag issues, so your lift over drag ratio actually increases substantially compared to just having one set of magnets. So overall, the, the passive skis were, were great for us. It was a win-win. We were able to support 50 to 7 percent, 50 to 70 percent of our, our overall weight on just using, uh, adding a passive skis where instead of just using a single passive ski. And then from the competition point of view, we were able to increase the uh, payload because now the hover engines have to do less of the work. So we have less power going to the hover engines. We have less stress on, on that system, so we can increase the weight and take a little bit of a compromise and actually get increased back, back in our uh, overall hover height, which once again is uh, greatness, uh, is beneficial because we do not uh, have to worry about drag. And this is, you know, as we mentioned on the previous slide, uh, the net benefits are, are way below the five meters per second. Uh, so as you can see in our uh, estimated velocity plot here, most of our time is actually going to be a benefit, so that's uh, another benefit of the passive ski design. So where do we have to go from here? So uh, as I mentioned, we never validated it. It's all simulations to date. But this is something we did with our brake system. So we, we know how there's a, an easy way to set this up and get some good data to compare to our trends on the simulation. Uh, then also uh, potentially adding more, uh, we'll call it magnets and magic to our pod and, to make it better. Uh, but we really just, you know, we're a group of engineers get together. And I, I like to point out Amir in the background when he's jumping, how excited we were when we actually got this off the ground. It's uh, right there, that's the best. Um, yeah, so that's uh, our loop, uh, where we are with passive skis today. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be here. Uh, I can't say that we checked that because uh, it, we have almost had a sunk cost uh, mentality with the hover engines. So, you know, we already bought them. There's a significant chunk of our costs. So like, we never really considered taking out the, the hover engines, even though uh, from a mechanical team, you know, that was the biggest issue is the battery packed and hover engine combination. Thanks. <laughs>